Alec, tell us what's up. What are you going to do? What's your, this is your time. Tell us. Yeah, great. Well, look, there's obviously all, all the kind of uh, uh, stuff that I uh, believe in respect to the arts. And I kind of feel like, you know, I've, uh, I've been speaking about it a lot. So I'll, I'll briefly go there. I'll say, you know, obviously uh, uh, double the funding to the Ontario Arts Council, reinstate the Indigenous Culture Fund, which Doug Ford cut. Unbelievable, ridiculous, remarkable, but not surprising. Um, Those all uh, describe him very well. Uh, yeah, right? Like remarkable yet like, yeah, that makes sense. Shocked so but not surprised. Shocked but not surprised, but very sad. So mm -hmm. we're going to get all that, all, all, all that back. The other thing we're thinking about is an arts and culture tax credit because, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there's so much uh, money that is, uh, um, sorry, there's not enough money, but when money is given to the arts, there isn't, uh, there, uh, a lot of it isn't touched. A lot of it isn't seen. And it's very important for that to happen because, you know, there's the first order effect of art, which is, you know, the beautiful thing, the thing that's made. But there is that second order effect of art in that we all know that it just, it literally lights up cities, it lights up communities, it drives money into the economy. And I feel like there's just not enough people touching art. So if we made it more accessible to people, if everybody got a certain set of, a certain uh, bit of money that they can go spend to consume art, I think mm -hmm. that would be really great. I really think a lot of people, like for instance, I'm Persian, right? So I came to this country when I was three. If it wasn't for me being in the theater, I can guarantee you that my immigrant family would not go to the theater. But they went to the theater and now they love the theater and they will continue to go to the theater. Mm -hmm. We have to let make people touch this stuff. And the more people touch it, the more they're gonna want it. So that's, that, th those are the most important things. But I will tell you something. Sometimes the most limiting factor for artists to succeed it are the limiting factors for everybody to succeed. Mm -hmm. One of the things that stops a female artist, for instance, from going as far as she should go isn't arts funding, it's childcare. It's not having affordable and accessible childcare. There's actually been sociological studies that, that will tell you that it's childcare that's limiting people. Affordable housing. Right now in Toronto, St. Paul's, for instance, the number one demographic is single folk is people who live in single dwelling units, like mm -hmm. one person. Now, most people in downtown Toronto, they're spending like upwards of 60 to 90% of their income is going into their housing, 60 to 90%. You talk to a financial advisor, that financial advisor is going to tell you that 30% is a safe way to go, 30%. Who is paying 30% for their cost of living? Yeah. Who is paying 30% on rent? Nobody. Everyone is paying a lot more. So we have to really make affordability a big issue. And then the other thing that we need to think about just in general, I know I'm going on for a long time, but you asked me an important question. I did. Yeah. Listen, the time is yours, <laughs> friend. This is yeah. great. I will say, you know, we have to also, in respect to um, two things. Number one, we need to recognize that we are not in the digital future. We are in the digital present. It is here now. So there are certain things that we need to um, uh, latch onto. I'm a big techie guy. I love that kind of stuff. We need to embrace tech. We need to not have our future be defined by big tech. That can't be. It has to be defined a lot more by our tech. Mm -hmm. And so, so there are certain things. Number one, quality broadband needs to be human right. A, an absolute and utter human right. Because individuals who do not have really high quality broadband, they're limited. And that is something that we cannot allow to happen. Number two, we need to make coding, computer programming, something that we teach at, in, in our schools as an mm -hmm. essential thing. Because those people who do, those people who, who have that are gonna be the ones who are gonna get the jobs in the future and they're gonna be the ones that are gonna make the businesses of the future. We're in that, in, in that kind of digital world. Social media needs to be regulated. We are killing each other online. We are quote tweeting our way to like destruction and that needs to change and there are restraints that need to happen. Mm -hmm. Finally, the thing I'm gonna say is this. We need to start to talk about equity and we need to start to get it. And in order to do that, it is very important for all of us who want, you know, not equality, but equity to be able to talk about it in a way that we understand the benefits of it. So what I mean by that is that right now what happens is when we talk about equity, when we say, you know, we want racial justice or we want justice in respect to, you know, gender equality and all that stuff, what ends up happening is there's a whole group, a swath of people who then feel like, oh, this is going to be a takeaway from me. You're going to give to X, you're going to give away from me. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They're wrong and we, should, we can yell at them and we can tell them they're stupid. Or what we can do is we can try to relinquish the fear that lives inside them. And mm -hmm. what we could tell them is that what we're trying to do as a society is that we're trying to recognize the fact that it's not enough for us to be at the starting line. 
it is imperative and important for all of us to be able to cross the finish line with dignity. And when we're able to cross the finish line, when everybody's able to get to that finish line, that's when there's equity. But there's another thing that we need to add. When there is equity, that is when society thrives. For instance, I will give you just two quick facts, just in, in per pertaining to women. If women are, you know, contribute as equally as men in the labor market, it's a hundred billion extra dollars a year in the economy. When women um, are 10%, 10% of a corporate leadership is female, 24% greater economic activity, 47% better corporate dividend. And there, is, there are facts and stats that support what happens when uh, more black people get involved, more indigenous people get involved. It's more talent. It's good for everybody. So we have to learn to not only fight for equity, get equity, but be able to like articulate it in a way that we let people know that this is good for all of us. Do not be afraid. And that's why I think, you know, people like us, artists coming in who can have, who have empathy, who smell the audience, who could see what's going on. I, I think it's really important. So tell us, you're running for the <laughs> nomination. Yes. So for people like me who are, want to support and also want to learn how that system all works, can you take us through sort of what the process is leading up to that? Because you have yeah. to become a nominee before you can go the next yeah. leg of the journey. Yeah, so so here's the thing. Not a lot of people know how this cookie is made. Mm. And I feel that that is an absolute and utter kind of like disservice to the democracy that we're in. You know, what people need to realize is that every single election, whether it's provincial or federal, you have a say not just in the party that is going to be on that ballot when you go, but you have a say in the person that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And anybody who lives in Toronto, St. Paul's, or if this was another riding somewhere else, you are allowed to nominate a, a person for the party to be on the ballot. Now you have to become a member of the party, but right now becoming a member of the party is so simple. It's so easy. Anyone can become a member of the Ontario Liberal Party. It's free. Uh, mm -hmm. So you do it. Um, but it's really great to have like a say in, again, not just the party, but the person, because at the end of the day, it's like, yes, parties are, um, um, uh, uh, you know, they're set, but they're not monoliths. And sometimes, you know, having the best candidates really makes a difference, really, really makes a difference. So mm -hmm. if you want to nominate me, for instance, you just go to alimoma.ca, you register, we set you up. And then when the nomination meeting is called, you basically are going to virtually show up and say, I want Ali to be guy. on the ballot. I want this guy to be on the ballot, to be on the ballot. Um, this is something that's kind of been percolating inside me for a, uh, a very, very uh, long time. And, um, you know, obviously, but then COVID happened, then George Floyd happened. And then, you know, the question that you get asked all the time is like, why are you running? But, uh, you know, really after this year, um, it, it really shifted from like, how could I not be? And uh, you just kind of see everything that's going on in this world and everything that's happening outside and everything that's happening inside. And it's just, it's like, uh, what can I do? And uh, uh, how, how can I just, uh, you know, make things better? But then the other thing ultimately you say to yourself is like, why me? Why not somebody else? Because everybody has ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to do the things. Everybody, I think I have good ideas, but, um, you know, for me, it really was about what happens if, you know, politics politics can intersect with like the world uh, that, that we both know, a world that is uh, creative, a world that is imaginative, a world that is empathetic, a world that is uh, uh, forward looking and is collaborative. Uh, uh, what, what happens if we can do that? And uh, that's kind of the thesis for, you know, uh, the campaign. So. Well, listen, I mean, you know, we're big fans of, of what you're doing and all of the advocacy you've done for our community. So I'm I mean a fan of you. Stop it! Never stop it. You're advocating. Look at this show. Look at the people you bring on here. Good for you. It's amazing. Honestly, Jenny, like, honestly, who thanks, cares bro. about me? Look at you. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Ali Momin, thank you so much. We wish you all the best. Check out alimomin.ca. Yeah. All right. Future okay. Member of Parliament, Ali Momin, thank you so much. Thank all the you. best. And uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned. All right. Okay, take care. See ya.